everybody and welcome! Once again there is some news about Kerbal Space Program 2, the upcoming sequel to the beloved space simulation game. It is titled Work From Home Developer Update and… well that's exactly what it is. <laughs> we see some of the developers talking about how the human malware situation, <laughs> really trying to avoid demonetization here, and working from home has treated them. But we also get glimpses into new things in KSP2 we haven't seen before, albeit not as many as we might have hoped for. Right at the start we see one of the developers visiting a rock shop, or however you want to call this. Apparently they wanted to get inspiration for new planets by looking at how odd shaped rock formations look in real life, and immediately the video jumps into the changes they had to make to their organization in order to stay safe and healthy. I'll talk about that particular aspect at the end of the video, let's first focus on the things we might learn about KSP2. At around 1 minute and 12 seconds we can see some impressive visuals on a graphics tablet. Whether those are directly from the game or just concept art, I don't know, but we can see some sort of gas or particles escaping from what looks like a rocky surface with the sun lighting everything up from behind. This might be a spaceship, but from what the video can offer us, we can't really tell anything about its size or function. What we do get a better look of is the Duna colony the developers apparently have shown in detail to PC Gamer. If you have followed this channel, I have talked about that respective article and what we have learned from it in a previous video, link is in the description or in the iCard up in the corner. This colony building makes a few appearances throughout the video, so let's focus on this because colony building will be a big part of Kerbal Space Program 2 as we have already learned in the past. First things first, it is huge! That building in the center is the colony VAB, we have seen it in other footage on the moon and also in the cinematic trailer and the scene where later an entire colony crumbles. It will probably also serve as launch pad and landing platform. Adding to that there is a long runway extending directly from the VAB from what appears to be a hangar door. This and something else we will talk about later lets me assume that this colony VAB can be used either for rockets launching vertically or space planes launching horizontally right out of the same building. Let's stay with the colony for a little while. There are very large structures around the VAB. These could be habitation complexes or house science laboratories or engineers. We don't really know at this point. Notice the domes on top of some of the towers? Those look like the ones we have already seen in the first KSP2 trailer. Since space is at a premium when you want to build a space colony and those domes offer a lot of open space, I would assume they are recreational spaces to make your kerbals feel better while stuck on a faraway planet in a hostile environment. And we also know that if kerbals celebrate, they procreate, so keeping them happy to get more kerbals for future missions will be a key part of colony development, I would assume. I mean, the developers even gave it a name, a boom event. A bit later we see a gorgeous look at something I would assume are greenhouses in the shape of a half cylinder. Makes sense, if you want your colony to be self-sufficient, it will need to provide food. Does this mean we will get some sort of life supporter system in KSP2? Maybe it will be a difficulty setting like we have with the communications network in the first game. We don't know yet, but we can safely assume there will be food for some purpose in the sequel. Further away from the main colony buildings we have solar arrays and then what appear to be maybe spherical fuel tanks. There are also other containers around a structure in the center of that part of the colony, some also spherical, some cylindrical and some in other shapes. There is also a crane moving about. Not sure what its purpose is, but it appears rather small to move those storage tanks put on the platform. Maybe it's just decorative, or it's the construction animation for the colony. <sighs> There's still so much we do not know about Kerbal Space Program 2, but it is also more than a year until it is set to be released. We also get a short glimpse inside of the new VAB at the 4.5 minute mark in the video. And there's a lot to unpack here. Some things look very familiar, like the part selector on the left, but there are many new things to discover. 
Unfortunately, KSP forum user the Aziz already created this handy breakdown of the new elements. Let's start from the top left. Since KSP2 will offer more than one location where you can build your spaceships, the VAB now tells you where you are, in this case the classic VAB at the Kerbal Space Center on Kerbin. That menu icon on the left indicates there will be a list of other available rocket building sites. Moving straight down we have the part selector, which you can sort by size, mass or type. In this image size with small, medium, large, x-large and 3 times x-large parts visible. These are aerodynamic parts and as they appear here we can make another assumption, namely, there still won't be any procedural wing parts. These all look very much like fixed size parts. Keep in mind though, this is a very early image and things could change until the release. A little further to the right there are many new icons. Some are easy to decipher, for instance switching between rocket and space plane mode in line with my earlier assumption about the colony VIB, undo and redo, as well as center of lift, center of thrust and center of mass. But there are new things as well. There appears to be something that could be an icon for symmetry modes and then many new ones where your guess is as good as mine. I do think that the Aziz's assumption about the radioactive effect range might be correct. That would be important for those long-haul interstellar missions as well. Right in the center we can see almost two rockets being built at once. This is in line with something we have heard previously. Apparently you will be able to build parts of your rocket like complex boosters right there instead of having to create a separate subassembly and then loading them into the main craft. We can also see a little welding animation when placing the part, which is a nice touch. Moving over to the right we have the usual icons, new craft, save craft and load craft, as well as a nice little nod to a phrase made famous by the one and only Scott Manley, fly safe. I wonder if any of the game's tutorials will greet us with hello Scott Kerman here. Anyways, <laughs> below this we have more icons, again with some being more intuitive than others. Something looking like a checklist or maybe it is something that has to do with the mission you want to perform, then one icon that appears to have something to do with staging and a color palette. You will be able to paint your vehicles with multiple colors, this we already know. The rest is up for speculation, but the Aziz's speculation with the potential Delta V map is also in line with what we have learned from the PC Gamer article a while back. There are also some updated visuals for Duna, Minmus and Kerbin and I have to say they look rather gorgeous. We also get a short glimpse of one of the animated tutorials. These were also mentioned in the PC Gamer article. The Kerbal riding the bike apparently represents the massive engine trying to boost the large rocket out of the atmosphere represented by the steep hill. We also get a montage of one of the developers working on that tutorial. Speaking of developers, let's return to something I mentioned at the beginning, the unusual situation we are now all in worldwide. The KSP2 team appears to be in lockdown since March and they all deal with it differently. While some of them enjoy staying at home, others miss having personal interactions in the office. I have felt both while having to work from home myself and creative director Nate Simpson mentioned something that is indeed the danger of working from home blurring the lines between work and your private life. Because if you just have to wake up and sit at your desk at home, the hours can fly past you and suddenly you clock in 14 hour days instead of your usual amount. So here's a reminder for not just the case P2 devs, but everybody that has to work from home, look after yourself. If there are no colleagues around to grab you for coffee or lunch or there's a deadline to catch the train or anything like that, make your own schedule. Schedule breaks, especially for food which I tend to forget myself sometimes. So this is everything I was able to distill from the short video that was posted online. What do you think about the new information we got? Does it make you more excited for Kerbal Space Program 2? What are your interpretations of what we can see in this new video? Let me know in the comments or join me and a steadily growing group of space enthusiasts over on my Discord. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.